Messenger RNA vaccines from Pfizer and Moderna have been shown to be highly effective in preventing COVID-19. But this technology is very new, and that's made them extremely vulnerable to disinformation campaigns. Uh, these include a false worry or a false belief that the mRNA vaccines could somehow alter your DNA. So are mRNA vaccines actually risky? These are the facts that you need to know. So what are mRNA vaccines and how do they differ from traditional vaccines? Instead of introducing into the body a weakened version of a virus or a piece of a virus, they temporarily turn the body's cells into tiny vaccine-making factories. So how do they do this? Well, what they use is synthesized versions of something called messenger RNA. Now that's a molecule that normally carries genetic coding from our DNA in the nucleus to the body's protein-making machinery. But what happens here with the vaccines, mRNA, once introduced in the body, instructs the body to make the spike protein, which is a key protein that the SARS-CoV-2 virus uses to enter cells. And now this, in turn, stimulates the body to make long-lasting antibodies to the coronavirus. Messenger RNA vaccines are quicker to develop than traditional ones because production doesn't require growing live viruses or viral proteins inside live cells. Also, messenger RNA's modular nature makes designing vaccines relatively straightforward. In the case of Moderna's vaccine, it took only a few days for researchers to come up with the messenger RNA sequence that is used in the actual vaccine. Uh, so what type of disinformation is actually being spread about mRNA vaccines? Uh, well, one thing that we uh, that's out there a lot is that steps were somehow skipped uh, in developing or authorizing the vaccines. Now, it's true that these vaccines reached the market in absolutely record time, but that's actually not because any testing steps were skipped. Basically, companies were able to speed up the process by performing some testing steps in pr parallel. And in addition, especially in the case of Moderna's vaccine, the U.S. government took big financial risk by paying to gear up manufacturing uh, well before the results were in. And in fact, even with the emergency use authorization of these vaccines, the FDA actually established strict guidelines in advance for what they'd be required uh, to get emergency approval. And the vaccines went through full phase three trials uh, with 30,000 patients, uh, at least that many or more. And they were required uh, to show uh, more than 50% efficacy in preventing symptomatic disease. And the two messenger RNA vaccines uh, easily outperformed that standard. And they were also required to show you know, two months of safety follow-up from their phase three trials. Another thing that's out there that's uh, disinformation is the suggestion that somehow uh, messenger RNA vaccines are somehow going to alter your DNA. Despite the name messenger RNA, these vaccines, they don't get into the cell's nucleus at all. They don't change your DNA in any way. And so they're not analogous uh, to a gene therapies that go uh, actually change your DNA. These vaccines, uh, messenger RNA is short-lived and they don't alter the DNA uh, in any way. Another worry that's out there is that there have been many uh, adverse event reports for these vaccines through the adverse event reporting database, more so for these vaccines than other vaccines, such as influenza vaccines. Uh, now, it's true there have been a lot of adverse event, voluntary adverse event reports uh, to the uh, databases kept by uh, the government for the vaccines. But comparing them to older you know, technologies that have been out there for decades and decades, it's not an appropriate or meaningful comparison, according to uh, top authorities that I spoke to. Basically, the number of these reports uh, tends to surge when a treatment or vaccine is in the news. And really, nothing's uh, been more in the headlines or more in the news or more top of mind these days in COVID-19 uh, vaccines. Uh, you know, the reports uh, can be filed by anyone. They don't constitute confirmation at all that vaccines uh, cause an adverse event. Now, given the large numbers of people being inoculated these days, uh, the chances that some unlucky people will get sick or even die shortly after getting the shots, uh, uh, there's a significant chance that it'll happen regardless of the vaccine. And then another worry is that we don't know the long-term side effects of the vaccines. Now that, I guess, is true because uh, by definition, you can't know long-term effects uh, for something so new. First of all, vaccine, the worst vaccine side effects do tend to show up in the first a couple months. Uh, and that's why the U.S. Food and Drug Administration insisted on getting two months of uh, full safety data for the vaccines from the phase three trials uh, before uh, giving them emergency authorization. Now, adverse event reports since then have not detected any patterns of death that would indicate a problem with the vaccine, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says. 
so far, the real world results uh, that have been starting to roll in look good. A data from Israel's largest healthcare organization found that after two doses, Pfizer's vaccine was 94% effective against symptomatic COVID and prevented 87% of COVID hospitalizations. And that's according to peer-reviewed published data. I'm Robert Langreth for Bloomberg News.